Now, once you have made up your mind that, okay, I don't mind, um, I want to embark on this journey, then you have to be ready to, I, I wanted to say pay the price, but I don't want to scare people. So I don't think that is such a huge price to pay. But indeed, yes, I mean, like everything in life, there's something that you have to do um, in order to get there. And what I've noticed many times is that people desire the things that visibility brings, but they are very reluctant to do those things that visibility brings or the things that will give them visibility. They're very, very reluctant, very, very reluctant. And that's why many of us are still not visible. Look, the truth is, if you're going to be successful in life, you have to be comfortable with visibility. You cannot be successful in life and not be visible. It's impossible. Take it from me. It doesn't matter whether you're shy or reserved or outgoing or an introvert or whatever, but there is no way you get to the top of anything without being visible. Now, I was having a conversation and we were talking around, um, you know, so we're having this conversation. So she was telling me that I don't really like being a leader. You know, I'm not into all these leadership things. I just want to, and this was in the context of church. Okay. So her view was that I just want to be doing my own thing. Yes, I want to serve God, but I don't want people to start calling me out to lead people or all those kind of things. I just want to serve God on my own in the background, just do things that make things happen. I was just smiling. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. There is no way you're going to serve God and be efficient and effective, and you will not be noticed. It's impossible. It, it, it go, you, you don't have to raise your hand and say, make me a leader. No, that's not how it works. The moment you're effective in what you're doing, you can't hide results. So it won't be long before you'll be called to do more. That's just how it works, unless you don't want to do anything at all. The only way you won't end up in leadership positions is if you opt not to do anything at all. Then I would understand that that's a choice you've made. But the moment you've made that choice to put your hands in the plow, like we would say, and you're delivering results, people will notice you. It's just like light. You can't hide light. You can't say, oh, no, I just want to be shining under the radar somewhere. It's impossible. Jesus himself said it. You can't hide. You can't put lamp under a bushel. You can't. So that visibility comes with delivering results. It comes with being effective. It comes with doing things, getting things done. All right? So if you want to, you can't say, I want to, I want to, I want to be promoted. I want to be a, a senior manager. I want to be a GM in my office, but I just don't want to be talking to people. It's impossible. It's impossible. You can't, you can't do it. It goes hand in hand. All right. So get ready for visibility. You can't, if you don't want, like I said, if you don't want to be visible, you don't want to be out there, you don't want to be known, then just know that you've made the choice not to be successful. It's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as that. But if you want to be successful, you will be out there. So it's best for you to start learning how to manage visibility. Okay. You know, many years ago, um, when I was a lot younger, when I was growing up, um, I, I, I used to be very shy, very, very shy. You know, in fact, it's I still think I'm shy. It's just that you may not know. But I, I mean, then when I, I mean, when I was young, much younger, I was, I was, I was kind of very young. The worst thing you would do to me is to ask me to come and speak to people. I will literally start crying. I'm telling, that's how bad it was. You know, I just couldn't stand talking to people. You know, and this thing went with me up to university. I'm not even talking about when I was a baby. Up to the university, I could not talk to people. You know, but I, I realized at some point that hang on. If you want to be successful in this life, this is something you can't run away. There's no way you're going to be successful if you don't talk to people. So you better start learning it anyway, unless you don't desire to be the CEO of a company someday, or you don't desire to be a leader in the industry someday. Um, but is that what you want? You know. So for those of you who may think that, <laughs> Public speaking is not my thing. I just don't want to get into that space. I'll just be doing my own thing on my own. You're kidding. You better start learning it now. 
you know, because you would have to do it. You have to do it because you're going to be a leader. You're going to be a big leader. And there are different levels to this thing. So, and that's why I ask those questions so that you make up your mind that this is the journey you're going to be on. And you're going to, because I don't want to make assumptions because not everybody really wants to be a leader. Okay. So I, I believe I'm talking to leaders. So if you're not interested in being a leader, you're just happy to be photocopying documents and binding them and making sure that things are properly kept in the office. That's great. That's a ministry. We're grateful for people like you. Okay. But if you want to be out there at the top, you're going to be visible, right? You're, you're going to be visible. And you should now be ready to do the things that will give you visibility. There are a lot of benefits that come from being visible. You know, so it's a good place to be in. So be comfortable with it, enjoy the ride. Um, and, you know, before we even talk about visibility, there's something that comes before that. I'm not gonna spend time on it because it's not my remit for this evening, but that is performance. I cannot overemphasize the importance of being a performer. You can't take it lightly because, you know, what, what do you want to give visibility to? You want to shine visibility on your work, on your skills, on what you can deliver. Because if you're empty and you want to be visible, that is the fastest way to be shot out of, <laughs> out of people's you know, my, minds. Okay, It's even better you're not visible if you're a non-performer. So we manage the damage, right? But you've got to get your stuff together before you even start talking about visibility. If you've ever heard, heard me share on the pie concept, which is performance, image, and exposure. Performance is the first. So that is a non-negotiable. You know, sometimes people make the mistake of thinking that when you start ascending in the organization, performance is no more important. That is not true. That is not true. Performance is still a key component of you being successful. Even CEOs are rated based on performance. Every CEO has metrics. They have, they have their mandate to grow the market share of the business. They have their mandates on things they need to uh, 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 achieve in terms of profitability, in terms of return to shareholders. If you don't do that, you are out of the seat. Yeah, I've, I've, I've worked with CEOs who have been fired before. That's, that's it's, it's performance. But of course, as a CEO, there's other leadership things you need to be doing. But beyond that, your being CEO is not just about wearing nice suits and giving nice speeches. If the results are not taking the company where it should go, you will be fired. So your visibility begins with performance. Please don't ever drop on that, you know, but I'm not going to go too much into that because that's not our remit for today. But I just want to make sure you keep that at the back of your mind that as we talk about visibility, we're talking about visibility that is based on outstanding performance, not visibility that is just based on empty swag. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't be um, um, just an empty person there. All right. So let me quickly share with you. I don't have slides, by the way. Pardon me, okay? Because I want to be looking at you as we're having this conversation. But you know, you can you can take notes, and and you've even seen many slides already. So um, let's let's just have a conversation. But I'll give you a few tips here. Um, they're not hard. If you know me, you know that I don't believe in complex things, right? Not that they're not complex things, but I like to make things simple. Um, so, that, but the problem is, do people really want to do these things? to make up your mind to do these things, because that's really the secret. Now, the first one, before you go to the first one, there's a bonus one that came in just a few minutes before this meeting. So let me give you that. Let's start with your name. Work on your name. That's a strange one, okay? So what, what do you mean? I've already been named. I've already been named uh, uh, Ikechuku or, you know, whatever your name is. But go for a simple name in your organization. Look for how you can simplify your name. It may sound trivial, but it's important. It's important. I know many of us, we have native names that are really deep, okay? Now, if you work in a multinational, for example, you want to make it easy for your colleagues to call your name, okay? Don't, don't make your name too complex. Go, and, and, and luckily enough, in Nigeria, we do have short forms of our names. 
So feel comfortable to use the shorter versions of your name so that people can remember you easily. When you deal with senior leaders, if your name is so complex, it's an easy way for them to forget you. They can't be biting their tongue when they want to call you. But if your name is hosty, like mine, it's very simple. You know, they'll remember you easily, you know. So I'm, I was deliberate in, bring, in, in calling myself that because a lot of people murder my name. It's not that the name is complex, but they will call it in different ways, in different styles and everything. And some will even call you Sita. And I, they will not give you new names. I'm like, what's happening here, please, guys? I need to take my name back and give you a version that is simple for you to remember. Okay, and that's how I came up with that, and, and it has worked. It's very important. Um, it's very important. So think about how you can use a name that is easy for people to remember and for people to call. So let me give you quickly seven tips that you can deploy in order to boost your visibility um, at work. The first one is speak up in meetings. You see, you see how simple it is. It's not, it's not rocket science. Just speak up, admit. How hard can that be? You know, I talk about this thing almost all the time. And for some of you, I've, I've, I've been in meetings with you after I've talked about this thing, and you have not implemented it. You have still not spoken up in some of the meetings that I've been with you. So what is happening? You see, you have to, you have to make up your mind to practice the things that you hear. And don't postpone it. Don't say, okay, I'm waiting for that special. There's no special meeting. Start from today. Speak up in meetings. It's so important when you speak because that is how people get to measure your level of knowledge. There's no way for me to know how knowledgeable you are except when you begin to talk. When you begin to talk, I'm beginning, you see, when you speak in meetings, people are not just listening to what you're saying. They are assessing the quality of your thoughts. They are assessing, they're assessing a lot, okay? There's also the confidence part of things. Now, you know, for many companies and organizations, we're working remotely for the, we've been working remotely for the most part since last year because of the pandemic. So you're not really um, having face time with people as much as we would when things were normal, if you get what I mean. So. Your only arsenal that you have now is your voice. So you've got to utilize it. Your voice has to be strong and known. You, you, your voice is, is an asset that when you're talking, people recognize your voice because they hear you. They, they, they are getting used to hearing you and not just hearing you, but you make sense. So before you go for any meeting, prepare for the meeting, understand the meeting is also a bonus in this. Try this as quickly as you can. Try to be the first person to comment or to ask questions. That is hard. This one is hard, I can tell you. You know, because when you come for those meetings, everybody's just trying to figure out everybody. I said when it's with a senior leader and the person asks, so do you have any questions? Everybody's scared. Nobody wants to ask, right? The first guy who breaks the ice registers with that leader, okay? Registers, I'm, I'm telling you. So if you are that first guy, and if you're gonna be the first guy, you, you better ask a sensible question, <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm not saying you should not be scared and not to ask, okay? But if you're that first guy, make sure you have done your homework and you ask a brilliant question. Once you do that, you open the door. Every other person now starts latching on to what you are. And what you find sometimes people say, uh, just like uh, Bola said, uh, just like Victor said, so it's taken off from where to, you have become a star. It's as simple as that. You've become the reference point. And you should be finding yourself where you are. Say, yes, my people keep, keep asking, follow my lead. All right. That's how it works. Okay. But don't be shy to speak up in meetings. You said you want visibility. It has started. So don't shift in your chair. You, you, I, that's why I asked you first of all, do you want to be on this journey? <laughs> that's what it takes. So, so you cannot be in a meeting and not speak. And don't tell me, what if I don't have anything to do? Ah, that is the wrong question. Don't ever ask me, what if I don't have something to say? If you don't have something to say, it means you're not ready to be a leader. 
leaders always have so have you ever seen a leader that says he doesn't have anything to say leaders are always talking i mean if, if you ask me that question i know that you're not you're not working as a leader yet leaders always have something to say always so there must be something but, and listen when you ask that question it means you don't understand what we are talking about yet Sometimes when you ask questions, it's not, I hope you know it's not because you don't know the answer. You're not asking questions because you just lost or anything. If this is about branding, it's about present, it's, it's about giving yourself visibility. Sometimes even those questions are show off. You want to show your knowledge. And sometimes you're making a contribution. It may not just be a question. Sometimes it could be a contribution you're making. And when you make those contributions, leaders are nodding and making mental notes. I know this guy is sound. This guy is sound. That's it. They don't have to look at your appraisals. So don't spend three days and three nights writing fantastic appraisals, putting all the grammar. That that's not where your promotion comes from. I hope you know. Before appraisal, we've already decided who will be promoted. He said, ah, but that's not. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it's what it is. It's what it is. So it's the quality of your presentation. So make up your mind, especially when you have the opportunity. Every meeting is an opportunity for you to showcase yourself. That's what we're talking about, visibility. So it has nothing to do with being humble. You can be visible and humble. I hope you know that. So being visible doesn't mean you cannot be humble. You can be visible and humble. So ask the questions, okay? Right, so um, I'll leave that for now and go to the second one. And the second one I'll tell you is go for high visibility projects in your office. Go for those ones. You know, there are some projects that come up in your office. Maybe that project will put you in direct firing line with the CEO. You say, ha, ah, oh boy, I, I ain't going there, not me. You mean I'm going to be interacting with this mean boss? Uh, you run away. That's an opportunity lost. Is it not you that said you want visibility? <laughs> There's heat in visibility. <laughs> I'll be giving it to you. So if you know that job that is going to put you, you're going to be reporting every week or every two weeks to senior leaders, go for it. Take it. That is an express way for them to assess you and see what you're all about. I'll tell you a personal story. In one of my roles, um, in, in, while I was in GE, in one of my um, um, assignments, um, an opportunity came up. In fact, at the time, I, I was a senior leader then, of course, but you see, um, see. Self and align with that perspective. Very important. So if, and I'm going to talk about this, it's one of the points I have for you, okay? But flip back to what I was saying, um, the CEO didn't know me and I was just finding a way to, how, how can I make this man, you know, get personal with me? And then a project came up, you know, we're going to sell um, 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 a segment of, if I'm going to sell the business, we're going to spin off the business from the company. And um, so the CFO came to me and asked me if I would like to take this project. I did not think about it twice. I said, yes, I was going to take it. It was going to be a hard, complex project that nobody had ever done before. But my major take on that project, my major attraction was that this thing was going to put me in direct touch with the CEO. Because it was a high visibility project that was being done globally. And it had to, so in fact, the CEO wanted my boss to lead it, but my boss gave it to me and I took it. That's how important that project was. And my major reason for taking it was visibility to the CEO. And I tell you, I took on that project, it was hard, but I, 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 I had sleepless nights, but boy, did I deliver on that project. It was, it was I, I, I went over and above and the CEO, was pleased. I mean, he, he obviously knew me. He, he was raving about me. He knew he, he was willing to do anything for me. 
okay, because out of all the regions, we were doing better than all the regions in the country. I'm talking about, you know, Europe and other more developed countries were doing way better than they were. So he was extremely pleased. In fact, the, the, the CFO, one of my um, discussions with him was telling me that he was asking him that, where, where has this guy been all the time? How come he didn't know me? You know, because I, you have such a great talent and I didn't know, you see. That visibility, because you can be good at what you're doing, but if, if the top guy doesn't see it for himself, it's a different flavor, you know? So go for those high visibility projects. They, they, they have risks, by the way, because if you fumble on them, oh boy, is to God be the glory that will be singing for you. So that is the downside of it, because if any mess up, that's it. So you're better off under, under the canopy, like we sing. You know, of your manager and be doing your own thing. If you if you miss your numbers, no problem. Manager, you would understand, and you move on with your life, no issues. But you said you want visibility; it's part of the package, so you have to be out there. But you have to deliver it, and then when you deliver it, boom, they move you up. That's just what's going to happen. In fact, if the because at the end of the day, we didn't eventually um, seal that transaction, but I know that if that transaction had pulled through, in fact, I was already appointed a director in the new company that was gonna um, come into play. So that is always a platform for you to move up the ladder, all right? So go for high visibility projects, something that will put you in the line. Don't go for, all projects are good, but you, you, you get the point. Okay, so let me move to the third one. Now, reach out and connect with your manager and your manager's manager, okay? Now, this may sound simple, but some of us don't do this. And I recommend for you, if you don't, have a one-on-one -on -one meeting scheduled weekly with your manager. Can be for 30 minutes, pick a day, Thursday, Friday, you know, put it in the calendar. Don't let it be ad hoc. That's what I do. Sometimes don't wait for your manager to be the one to set that up with you, set it up. Plus your manager's manager, that's what I say. Some of you call it one over one or skip level, whatever you call it. So the person your manager reports to have direct access to that person. So for that person, maybe once a month, but please discuss that with your manager so he's in the loop or she's in the loop. Um, so he doesn't, I mean, he needs to know that you are speaking with his manager or her manager as well. Okay, and you just, you know, there's the way you present it that you like to talk based with them, you know, many of them will be okay with it. But if you have, you know, some people are interested, but if you have a manager who is insecure, sort of, you, you want to manage that um, properly. But once a month is good, but for your manager weekly. And for those weekly meetings, come prepared. Don't be casual about it. What you're gonna be sharing with them are your accomplishments from the previous week and what your goals are for the coming week. Be very organized. They will love it, I'm telling you. They will love it, you know? So have your accomplishments briefly. Maybe it can be one or two things or three things and then what you're focusing on for the week. It will be registering in their mind because sometimes you're doing stuff and even your manager is not so much aware as to how much you're doing. But you have to feed him. You have to tell him, oh, I'm working on, stuff is going on, all right? That is how you showcase what you're doing. That's how you showcase your work and they are aware so they can talk about, because sometimes people can ask your manager, how is this guy doing? Sometimes they don't have much to say about you. But if you've been feeding them with information as to what you're doing, and listen, I said accomplishments. I didn't say activity. There's a difference between activity and accomplishments. Focus on accomplishments, results. Now, there may be things you can accomplish in a week for sure. Some things may drag into months even. But focus on the ones you completed, or at least milestones. Okay, but don't say... Um, last week, I reached out to this department and I asked them this. That is not an accomplishment. That's an activity. Reaching out and asking questions, you've not accomplished anything. So be, you have to be careful about it because if those meetings are just for you to be reeling out what you did and not what you achieved, the man will get bored. He will soon start canceling those meetings because you're boring him with fairy tales of what you is. That's not the idea. Tell him concrete things you achieved. Concrete things you achieved. Very helpful. And also, you know, linked to that, you have to learn how to share your wins smartly. 
which is kind of my fourth point, okay? The, I, because this is a call and it's being recorded, there are some things I can say, but there, is, there are ways you can communicate accomplishments in a humble, <laughs> in a humble bragging way, if there's anything like that. But you see, you can send emails and say stuff like, um, look, we have closed this deal, or we have, we have completed the system migration. Maybe you're the person who was leading the system migration, and you thank all the team members who worked on that project, okay? That you, what you're doing is you're showing off in a cool way, all right? You're not saying, I did it. You're saying, look, guys, we have accomplished this milestone. We have reached this milestone, all right? And you're thanking the team. What will happen is that they'll start replying to you and say, wow, great job, and say, you, you really did well in this project, fantastic. Uh, well done, Diola, uh, great, outstanding job, Rola, and so on and so forth, okay? You have, you have packaged yourself, buddy. That's what you've done. You have to learn to do those things. Send emails, copy the leaders, let them know, let the world see what you are doing. Don't let it go to waste. You, you've, 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 you've implemented a new system and it went smoothly and you just shave it off your shoulder and uh, that's what we do, that's what we do. It doesn't end there, send an email. Let the world know and let them come back and reply you and, and give you a thumbs up. It can't, that's visibility. That's how they start knowing what you're doing. There's one I did recently, that's why I was smiling. I didn't know how to say it, but there's, there's something I led at work and we finished it earlier than we have ever done in previous years. And, and, and I'm in a new um, organization right now, even though that process was difficult, but we completed it and I, I, you know, I, I broke my back to make sure that we completed it. But I can't forget to send my email. How, how, how dare I forget to send that was done. I sent my nice email thanking everybody you know, for what we did. And as you can expect, lots of congratulations followed. Okay, that's one in the bag. I go and save that email. You see, you're building evidence. That's how you showcase yourself. Nobody's gonna do it for you. If you're waiting for your manager to be the one to send the email, <laughs> uh, you keep waiting on the Lord for that. You know, you, you, you are not sending the email to say, guys, I have accomplished it. That's not what I'm saying. You're sending the email to say, this is what we have achieved as a company and use metrics if you can. I fish for metrics all the time. In fact, I, I had to dig up metrics for something um, for three months prior. And you know, I'm seeing that we've made remarkable improvement. We've moved from 52% timely completion of a task to 92% last month. When I saw that metric, I'm like, this can't end with me. An email must go out. Okay. So I had to type another email, nice email. Put the metrics there with nice colors, put your arrow, green arrow going up to show that, look, we are on the upward trend. It's clear, you can't, you can't argue with numbers. And you send that out. That is visibility. So people know what you're doing. Because sometimes people say, how do I let people know? I'm telling you now how you let people know what you're doing. Because you're doing a lot, but nobody knows. And it matters that people know that you are working and what you're doing, okay? Um, all right, so, um, so that's the fourth one. Make sure you share your updates on your wins. Now, number five is volunteer to represent your team. Volunteer to represent your team. You know, this one reminded me of, um, this was many, many, this was, I think this was my first job, actually. Um, it was in a bank. I, I didn't do that job for a long time anyways, but um, I, in that bank, Part of the interview process was we we're giving a presentation and we we're very young then. I mean, I, I think I was maybe 23 or so at the time. Um, so you're given a task and part of the task was to make a presentation to executives of that bank. In fact, the CEO of the bank was there in the room with other EDs, uh, big shots, you know, and um, for each of the groups, somebody would have to come and make a presentation. When such things arise, are you going to opt to be the one to present? Ask yourself that question. When there's an opportunity, when, when you're in a group of seven people and we say, okay, we need one person to do the presentation, who will that person be? Is it you? 
do you, do you really think you'll be the one to raise your hand and say, I want to do it? Or are you the one that will say, ah, I'll call, I'll call, I'll go now, go, 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 go and do it. But you say you want visibility. And now you're running away from making a presentation or from representing your team, you see. That's why I said, are you sure you're ready to go on this journey? So you should be the one to make that pre presentation. Because if your team wins that presentation, it's you really that made the presentation. You are the one that will register in the minds of the executives that listened. Not really the entire, the entire team, yes, there will be benefit for them, but the guy who spoke is the guy who will be remembered. So whenever there's an opportunity to represent a team, be the one to represent. Don't shy away. Don't say, let me be in the background. Ah, I support you. Ah, thumbs up, thumbs up. Keep your thumb down. Go and do it. Go and do it. Go and do that presentation. Represent the team. Because you will be the one that they will remember. Okay? After, after all of that is, is done. All right? And then the sixth one is expand your network. I mean, that, that goes without saying. You know, you want to be visible, but you want to be visible to people. <laughs> Obviously, you're not you're not visible to elements. You're going to be visible to people. So you want to expand your network, both internal network and external network. Internal network is within your organization. Don't just be known within your function. Reach out to other functions. If you're in finance, find out what they do in engineering. If you're in technical, find out what they do in, in legal, in HR, in supply chain. Reach out to other people, commercial. Reach out to other people within the organization. That is how you build more visibility for yourself. The more people that know you, the better for you. That's what visibility is, is to be visible to people, right? So don't be in that cocoon of your function and be just there. Okay, it helps when you are known within the organization. It, 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 it builds your leadership profile. Okay, so reach out. Externally as well, reach out. Connect with people, stay in touch with people. The only way you get into some roles and into some organizations is through your networks. So you work that network. So the more your network, and look, what a fantastic platform we have in the Covenant community groups to be, so if anybody had always been one, how do I increase my network? How do I get, Pali, that answer has come to you by the community groups. Look at all the wonderful people that we have here. If you have established relationships with the 80, 85 people that we have here, you've done enough. But the question is, have you made that effort to reach out to people? We've brought the network to you. Since you are wondering where you get the network, we have now brought the network to you. Still, you are not reaching out. So are we, are we to come to your house to network your house? There's nothing there for us to do. So you have to make the effort to know people, to reach out to people. You're part of a bigger group called corporate professionals. Do you know the kind of people that are within this group? How many of them have you tried to reach out? To? I mean, yesterday I was, I, was, I, was, I was in church yesterday for a workers meeting and a gentleman came up to me that you know, he's, he's a member of the senior managers community and you know that he wants to, to be in touch with me. Well, he's taking a mentorship relationship because he's in finance and you know he wants to be in touch with me. Of course, I gave him my number and you know we 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 connect. I'm not calling for numbers, that's, I'm just giving you an example of what happened. But that's a, a, a good example of how you can reach out to connect with people that can be very beneficial for you. God has answered your prayer. You are not the one to take the answer. He's not going to open your hands to put the answer in your hand because the answer is all around you. You have great resources here. So that is an opportunity for you to extend and expand your network, okay? But if you're still shy and you're still in your own world, I would ask you the question again, do you want to be visible? Or do you want to just chill? I like to relax and chill, Netflix and chill. Mm -hmm. After chilling, bring out your chilled self so that we can see you and you network and you meet people because those are the people that can be the anchor or the platform for you to get to the next level. And then the seventh and final one, because uh, I want to wrap this up really quick, is um, leverage social media. 
okay, leverage social media. Now, your governor is the expert on this topic, so I may not say too much about it. I'm sure you've learned a lot from her already, but it, professionally, we have LinkedIn, right, uh, which, which many of us are aware of. And probably, I think you've had a LinkedIn masterclass, if I remember correctly. So if, if you didn't participate in that, I, I recommend that you do, okay? Um, LinkedIn is, an, is a fantastic platform, I'm telling you. I have personally, I have, I have gotten several job offers from LinkedIn that I didn't apply for. Fantastic job offers, by the way. Okay, fantastic job offers. If I'm one of the job offers, let me not go there. But LinkedIn is a fantastic platform. Just take it like that, okay? It, it begins, what image do you project on LinkedIn? I, I spoke to some of you some time ago on beginning from your picture, your profile picture you have on LinkedIn. A lot of you have still not acted on it. I'm still seeing some funny looking pictures on LinkedIn. Dull pictures. Some have selfies as their pictures on LinkedIn, professional page. It's wrong. I, I, I'll tell you the truth. It's, you don't say, I don't have time. It, you don't, so it means you don't have time to be visible. So you shouldn't even be on this webinar. <laughs> Are you ready for the journey? You have to make the time. You have to go to that studio and take that headshot. Some people have their full picture on LinkedIn with their toes showing. What am I doing with your legs? It's a professional headshot. There are people who take these things. It doesn't cost a lot. You want to be visible. We got to be visible the right way. So you, you, you make sure you have good picture of yourself because people that want to recruit or want to hire that is their first interaction with you it says you don't know who is looking at you and the beginning is assessments so at least get that one right that is within your is god going to snap you he has asked your prayer and he has told me to tell you to put a good picture there and you have refused what else can we do it is it is is in your hands now so go and change it he's telling you again this evening go and change go and act on that thing there's public holiday coming on Monday, next week. You have the weekend. Go and change it. Eh? <laughs> That's where it begins. Because you have to project the right image as a leader. Now, having done that, so there's also a couple other things you can do. So uh, there are people who are very good at this. I'm, I'm, I'm learning to be more visible, even on social media. I'm not very great at, you know, so there's some, a couple of things you can do, like articles, right? Writing articles out there. Now, or even some of, the, now, on, in the social media space, gotta be careful the kind of comments you also put out there. Because like I said, visibility comes with its own downside. Because social media creates opportunity for everybody to be visible. But don't, don't now showcase the wrong thing. Be careful the comments you make and the kinds of things you, especially on LinkedIn, let me just focus on LinkedIn because there are other social media handles where you just have fun and do your stuff, which is okay. But for LinkedIn, don't be, be professional on LinkedIn. Let me put it that way. There's a young lady who reached out to me. Um, she, she wanted to um, apply for a role in my organization at some point. Um, and I'm like, okay, who is this person? So she sent me a message on LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, let me just check her out. And I checked her out. The first article she wrote there was, what was that again, sir? was a very funny article, first of all, full of grammatical errors that were pain in my eyes. And then she was talking about uh, Mother's Day and jollof rice and how she cooked the whole, and some very funny article. I'm like, what is this? You know, what, what is this story didn't even make sense to start with. I sent it to a few people and they were laughing and they were oh, like, this is what we see on it. And you're already sending me a mail that you want to come and take a look, you know? It, it, it will be hard for me to reconcile that, right? But I did have the favors of, of, of sending her a message that, look, um, I appreciate you reached out to me, but, you know, I mean, I don't mean to, um, you know, I don't mean this to come up the wrong way, but I really don't think you should be posting these kinds of things on LinkedIn because a lot of people who want to hire you will be reading your articles and your posts and it could create the wrong impression, you know? And she was grateful you know, <clears throat> for the feedback. I could have chosen to ignore it and, and so on, but sometimes people don't know what to post out there. So if you don't have something reasonable, it's better you don't even post anything. 
The one you can't do without is picking up in meetings. That one is compulsion. But posting on LinkedIn, I won't say it's mandatory. If you have something decent to post or you want to forward an article, do that. Okay, but don't come and be posting trivial stuff on, on LinkedIn. Make sure it's professional. You know, make sure it's professional. Do short videos on LinkedIn if you want. You know, do short videos, talk about career stuff. You know, say things that are um, um, inspiring, all right? I also see some articles that in say, for example, post sometimes, so great. Okay, do, do videos. But don't come and do videos and you're talking to us about one soap opera. On, on LinkedIn, on, on how, I mean, people do all sorts of funny stuff. So keep it professional because you want to um, um, pass across a message, okay? And if you belong to professional groups, it's also encouraged you can be active in those groups. So maybe you're a member of a professional body like ACCA or ICANN or CFA or any of the other, um, I'm just calling finance because that's my constituency, but any of the other professional um, bodies, you can, that's a good way to be visible. You can be quite active there. You can, you can present lectures for them. You can, you can participate in the elections or whatever. Um, be be, be a, a, a strong member of those groups. They are very helpful as well because if you're known, and this is also about being visible in the industry, in your industry, being an opinion leader, a thought leader, Okay, be visible out there. And some things can come out, um, you know, maybe there's a new finance act that has come out and you want to share an opinion on that. Write an article. It can be just a short page on what you believe um, this, you know, how this can impact um, um, businesses, all right? Or maybe the budget has just been passed. Write an intelligent article about it. Don't come and be writing like you're in a beer parlor and be arguing that all these budgets that they are doing our national assembly collecting this money. These politicians—they're all useless. And you are—you are not—you are not projecting the right image. Talk from a position of knowledge, so that people can learn from you. Don't join the crowd. Don't don't join the crowd noise. Be different. Differentiate yourself by putting up um, um, reasoned arguments and sensible debates. Not just so. Don't 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 come to LinkedIn and just sound like you're just gisting on the streets. You know, that, that's not how it, it should be done. So leverage social media to, to project yourself as a seasoned professional. You can, you can actually um, build a solid profile from that. And, you know, organizations, people will come for you. You know, but again, like I said, if you have any doubts or any questions on that, your governor is here to do justice to that. She's amazing, you know, on, on, on LinkedIn, if you're not sure. But if you're still letting that, go and face the one I told you first in your office, finish that one first before you come to LinkedIn. Eh? Because you know, LinkedIn is more of external, right? It's more of building an image or visible in the industry. But I tell you, if you start winning your office, forget industry for a second, because if you're very good and you're visible in your organization, soon it will spread, you know? So, so go and nail that one first. Okay, why I'm telling you to, to do some of those things in your office and before long, um, you, you'll be out there. Okay, so um, in, in kind of wrapping that up and then I'll open it up to whatever questions you may have. Um, the, I hope these are simple things. I, I don't think I said anything that is complex or out of this. I didn't tell you to go and um, deduct Pythagoras theory or go and, um, you know, say, you know, so these are simple things that you can do. The problem is, are you ready to do them? Don't hesitate. If you had, tomorrow is Monday. If you don't do these things I said tomorrow, you're not going to do them. That's how this thing works. You will not do them again. You will forget them. And you're back to your mood because they are easy, but I'm also conscious of the fact that they may not be easy for some people to do. So you have to almost like work against yourself to try to do it. But the moment you start doing it, you get better. Right? There are some people you see, you say, ah, man, this guy can talk, or this lady, ah, I love how she did this presentation. She was not born that way. She was not born that way. They started practicing it. So let's also say that about you. But you have to start from one day. Even if you choke, like you say, in, in trying to ask a question or to make a contribution, it's better you choke, choke. You will recover and you keep getting better and better. But don't come for meeting tomorrow and you 
remember my voice and I said, man, she said we should talk. What would I say? Ah, should I say, should I say? Anyway, he's not here, Jared. I'm not saying anything. I'm people not there for sure, yes, but you are prolonging the journey. That was the truth. So, but do it. Do it. Look at your calendar tomorrow. Look for those meetings and plan for what you're going to say. Start that journey. By the time you start doing it, you will get better at it. Over, you'll get better at it. You keep getting better and better and better at it. So the key is in doing. You know, these seven things, there's no way you do them um, that you will not boost your visibility. And, and with that visibility will come all of those wonderful things that you guys said at the beginning um, that, that come with them. So do them. Be, be, take that action. Do them. And, um, and, and surely you're going you're gonna, to um, be flying out there. Okay, so any questions that you may have? Um, let's see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oti. I mean, that was extremely simple yet very insightful. Um, okay, so we have someone with his hands up to ask a question. Um, Samuel, so I'm going to unmute you, so if you just go ahead. And then you can also put questions in the chat. After Samuel, I have two questions already that I'll take from the chat. So Samuel, please go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, this is Samuel speaking. Uh, my question is um, about how to navigate a scenario whereby you have a manager that um, kind of like has um, personal agenda and uh, will always block every attempt you make in order to, to reach out to the CEO. So how do you navigate such uh, a visibility scenario whereby you, know, you have a manager right in front of you who for his own personal reasons will always block any attempt you make in order to, you know, to, to reach out to the CEO you know, to like make yourself visible. And so how do you suggest and navigate uh, such a scenario? Thank you. Thank you, host, for oh. unmuting me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it was Samuel that asked the question, right? Yes. Yes, Samuel, that's a brilliant question. Thank you um, for that question. Very good question. Now, um, First of all, okay, you must never sabotage your manager. Never, okay? So no matter the kind of manager you have, you must understand the person, what works for them and what doesn't. The truth is the first person you must win over as your fan is your manager. That's the truth. Okay, so you, you have to have them on your side. If you don't have your manager on your side, <laughs> you, you see that laugh, I laughed. That's, 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 that's just the answer. Mm -hmm. So you have to have them on it because every other thing you will be doing will be futile. Because if a manager wants to um, 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 withhold or you know, um, be, a, be like an obstacle to your progress, they can easily do that. In any case, even the CEO or whoever um, is in the senior cater would always want to take feedback from your manager. And if your manager doesn't have something good to say about you, that's the end, really. It doesn't matter what the impression the man may have about you, but if, even if you believe, and even if the CEO believes that maybe the manager is trying to be funny, but the fact that there's no good relationship there says a lot and they'll be cautious. So I would say, you know, and that's why I said, when I was saying, if you want to reach out to your one over one manager, make sure your manager is in the loop, he's aware. It's all about um, approach. So if you have a manager who, there are, there are managers who don't like it, you know, when you want to go above them to have interactions with seniors. If you work with such a manager, I'll just say, be careful about that. Um, it, it could be, it could be that they, they, they don't fully how do I put this now? They, they are not yet very comfortable with you for some reason. 
okay, the, 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 the trust is not yet there. You know, you have to come to a point where, this is all about people management skills. You have to come to a point where your manager believes that you are all about them and nobody else. You're there to please them. You're there to follow their instructions. Um, you're there to make them succeed. You are not there to show yourself as the one who's doing the work while they are just um, overseeing what you're doing. They don't, want to, they don't want you to pass that message. So it has to be clear that to the manager, that you're making sure that the glory goes to them. Give them the glory. Don't contest that glory with them at all. Your time will come, so relax. You know, make them feel really good. So even if you're the one doing the work, if the guy is taking all the glory, relax. Don't, don't. Yeah, so managers are good at passing on the glory to the people who did the work. That's great. But if you're working with one who doesn't pass the glory, relax. It's okay. Because the, the, the moment they feel the sense that you want to sprout and, you know, that becomes a problem. And those are blocking everything. So make them feel very comfortable that you're not a threat in any way. You're there to make them succeed. You're there to make them take all the glory. Once they get to that point where they know that, okay, you are very loyal to my government now, they're going to drop the ball. They're going to they're gonna relax. And now they will now give you the freedom to do what you want to do because they trust that, okay, you're on my side fully. All right. So that's what I'm going to say to that. You know, so if, if that's your situation with the manager, try to make them feel more comfortable with you um, and that you're fully on their side. And that um, even when you have conversations with senior people, you still praise them, you still praise your manager, you still showcase them in good light. They'll feel more comfortable and it won't be a problem if you say you wanna you know, have interactions with um, the CEO, they will not be suspicious because they also are, are kind of guarding their own career as well. So they, they want to make, because part of what they are measured on, apart from their own deliverables as well, is how they're managing the people under them. So you going to his boss, he wants to be sure that you're gonna you're not going there to undermine his leadership because that will impact him but if he knows that you're his guy and you're on his side you've been loyal that's not a problem you know you can go all right that you're not going to sell him out so he needs to get to that point where he's very comfortable and has trust in you that you know you're not going to sell yourself at his expense you see, the way you sell yourself, even to the CEO, let me tell you, even the executives, they know who's doing the work. They know, they know, they know that it's not your manager that did the work. They know. Because they too were managers before. They've managed at that level. So they know, they know the game. These guys are smart. They, they're not, don't think they don't understand all these things. They do. And so that when you begin to show yourself as the person who did the work, they will not like you. They will know you're a rebel. Leaders don't like people like that, and they will talk about you. They know. So you've got to be humble. They know you're the engine in that team. They know. And so the only way, again, you can showcase yourself is when you begin to talk, you will talk intelligently. And like somebody who is smart, who knows the stuff, you don't have to say that I'm the one that did it. But when they ask that, even like a manager, there's a point where they'll ask questions. He can't answer again. He, he will joke because it's not the one that did the detailed work. Then he will say, oh, I'll get back to you. Let me check with Tosin. Then they will know that, ah, okay, it's Tosin that is the you know, engine behind this thing. You, you are sold, you see. And then when they now talk with you, you're able to give them the details of what caused that problem. You know the root cause, you dissect the matter and you leave it there. Uncle Mam is saying, ah, so when we did the analysis, I discovered that, ah, no, 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 no. That means now you're, you're pointing it to yourself, not really. Dissect the issue, go into the details of what happened, explain it clearly, and boom, you're done. They will take notes. They will say, okay, thank you, Tosin. Thank you very much for that insight. They've taken notes. You've sold yourself without selling your manager short. So that's just an example on how I spent some time on that question because I thought it was important. Um, so 
if the opportunity comes, fine, you know, take it, speak with the CEO. But if it doesn't come, don't push it. Don't, don't push it too hard. Let it, let it go. Um, just keep managing your relationship with your manager to a point where he's very comfortable with you now, you know, speaking with, um, with, with anyone. All right. I hope that helped. All right. Um, thank you very much. So there are, I have like, three questions from the chat. So I think I'll take the first two that are close to each other. So someone's asking that, what if it isn't part of the organization's culture to have people declare winnings and reports on achievements? Would it not be out of place to try and create visibility that and copying relevant email and then copying relevant individuals? So if it's not part of the organization's culture, and you go ahead to do that, that would not be out of place. And then I'd like to just add on this one. Someone is asking that people think that when you start doing it to be visible, you are promoting an agenda because you want to promote you want to be promoted. So how do you manage that? Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, and and your 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 line wasn't so clear, so I didn't yeah. really hear much of what you said. But I think you were asking, um, how why should you send emails if it's not the culture of the organization, organization. to yeah. deliberate wins? Is that the question? Yes. Yes. That is okay. All right. So. Um, I'll be surprised to know what organization that I'll be interested to know what organization that is because I, I doubt that there's any organization that is um, that 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 doesn't like wins. Okay, now it is the method you use. Okay, and that's why I try to give I, I try to give example. All right, I just don't want to go into too much detail. I try to give an example. You're not sending an email and you're very blunt or very direct that I have won this. Hey, praise me or something. You know, that's not the idea. So I, I'm trying to give this example, but I'm also trying not to get into more detail. But um, let me give you an example. So maybe the folks in finance can probably relate to this. Let's say you had a tax audit. So tax officials came to your office and they are auditing or investigating the office. And usually, maybe in the past, when you have these tax reviews, they're usually painful. In the past, it takes nine months to 12 months to complete a tax review. And in the past, the company has paid additional taxes of let's say 10 billion, 11 billion, 12 billion. That's the history. Now you've come into the organization another tax audit happens because of your coordination and organization. The tax audit was completed in three months with no extra liability for the business. That is good news for the business, not you. There's no way the business will not like to hear that. So what you're gonna do is you send, you're sending an email to the finance team copying the CFO, copying the CEO, it's just information. You're not celebrating wins. I'm the one telling you that it's a win, <laughs> okay? But you're sending an informational email. You're saying, dear all, I'm pleased to inform you that we have concluded the tax review, you know, that started so, so month, is now completed. And, you know, it's, it's great to know that we're not gonna have any tax liability this year. You'll recall that in previous years, tax audits have always been painful. It's always taken nine to 12 months to complete and we had had to pay minimum of 10 billion over the past three years. But this year, due to your extraordinary commitment and from the support we got from this team and that team, we were able to close this out in record time with zero liability for the company. That's it. Are you telling me the company will not want you to say something like this? It's not, it's good news. You're sharing the good news. 
but we know who led that effort. We know that is you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So is the approach that you take in sharing that information. You're sharing information that when people read it, they can see your hand in that achievement and they take note. And like I said, some of them would actually write back to say, well done. Well done, NJ, for this great milestone. This is great. Congratulations, NJ and the team. That's what they're gonna say. That's an organization that it, it can never be against the culture of any organization. What will be against it is when you start crowding, like we say, in it, it, it is the tone. So to, communication, we have to be smart about it, you know, but, but you, you know the effect is going to have on you. So is the approach. So put it out there as information, but it is a win and you were a major contributor to that win. That, that's how you do this thing. You have created visibility for yourself. So you cannot have completed something like that and you just say, ah, oh, we're done. Ah, oh, thank God, finally, this thing is done. I can't believe this tax audit is gone. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. Ah, you've missed an opportunity to increase your visibility. Because nobody will send that email. It's you that will have to send it. I'm saying, but is that not like blowing my trumpet? What did you think visibility was before? You think is uh, somebody else blowing trumpet for you? That's what it means. You've got to blow your own trumpet. That's what it means. You have to. Nobody will do it for you. You have to do it, but do it in a smart way. Because you know, like what I just read out is like you're praising the team, you're not taking the glory to yourself. But we know, we know, we know. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna say. There's there was a second question you asked. Um, what was that again? It's about feeling that when you ask, when you start doing things to try to be visible, people feeling that you are you are trying to be promoted, that it's just an agenda because you want to be promoted. Oh, so yes, yes, yes. That? Ah, look, that age of being visible, okay? Once you start being visible, you will be attacked. So that's why I said, are you ready for this journey? Do you know anybody that is in high position that doesn't face attacks? Let's start from pastors that we, are, that we all know. Do you know how pastors are attacked? For no reason, they've not done anything wrong. But you know how they are, because they are visible. I don't want to talk about political leaders. So if you're not ready for attack, don't get there. That's why I started from the beginning. Are you ready for this journey? Because it's going to come. Your friends will hate you, some of them. What was this one feeling like? Huh? Since when did this one start? That's what they'll be saying. Because now you're becoming visible. Say, so, uh, I service, mm, we know them. So if you are sensitive to those comments, you're not ready. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get to the top. How many people do you see at the top? Many of us. We spend time in the office, gisting and talking about our leaders in the office. That's the truth. You gossip about them. You say all sorts of things about the boss. And that is the truth. We know. We enjoy all those. It's sweet to talk about it. You talk about your CEO. You talk about your GM. You talk about your manager. It's part of the baggage of being visible. So you have to be immune to those kinds of things. Otherwise, you're not going to get there. So yes, is it an agenda? Emphatically, yes, it is an agenda. Do you have an agenda? Yes, I have an agenda. My agenda is to get to the top. Do you have a problem with that, sir? It is, it is my agenda. If you don't have an agenda, you have no business being in business. You have to have an agenda. There's nothing wrong with having an agenda. It's an agenda. I want to grow my career. That is my agenda. You may not like it, but I'm not here for you to like me. As long as I'm not hurting you, I'm not stepping on your head, but you have to have an agenda. As the come to cities, it is our agenda. You may not like it, but that is our agenda. We're going ahead with it. Say, so why are people doing this? You just want to, it is our agenda. You may not like it, but we have to move. You say we move. You think as you're moving, people like you're moving. As you're moving, that's your move. Some people don't like it, but will you, because of what people don't like, now stay in one place? The same people come and say, come, why are you even still here for all these years? So you can't, you can't, so you can't, you can't be bothered about that. So let them think whatever they want, you know. But again, like I said, be smart about how you move. Okay, be, 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 be smart about it. The approach is what matters. Don't, don't, don't rub it in people's faces. 
be, be, be smart about it, but don't be concerned about whether people think you have an agenda or not. It's, it's okay to have an agenda. It's not an evil agenda and it doesn't hurt anybody. It's, 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 it's a good agenda. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, just before we take, Victor has his hand raised, but I just want to this one out. It says, what do you think about leaving your camera on during meetings, even, even though it's optional? Yes, that's a good question um, on having your camera on. Uh, uh, you know, um, it's recommended, right? Um, there are one or two people whose cameras are on in this meeting. And we're in a meeting talking about visibility. I'm not saying you should put on your camera. Don't be under pressure to do that. That's perfectly fine. But, you know, um, it is part of you being visible. It is. It is. I know we, we're doing a lot of remote stuff these days and, you know, people are working from home and all of that. And sometimes you're taking calls from the kitchen and so on and so forth. All right. But the more people see you, the more visible you are. So let us see you. You said you want to be visible, but you don't put your camera on. How do you reconcile? Are you a spirit? We're all spirit beings, yes. But we're talking about... <laughs> Professional visibility. You can't always be behind camera. How can there are sometimes yes, you don't want to put on your camera because maybe you're multitasking or stuff, but that should not be your default default mode. You're in ghost mode. You're not ready to be visible. If it's office meetings, prepare. Get your background ready. Get your lighting ready. Ah, if you're gonna put on your camera, you better be sure the background you're showing. There's, there's a whole course on how you should prepare for Zoom meetings. I'm going to that today but it's part of it, very intentional about it. So dress properly for, it shows how serious you are as a professional, really. Okay, put on your camera, you know, be attentive in those meetings, make eye contact. So I recommend it, I, I surely recommend it. It's part of you, people, people see you and they get to know. And of course, if you are new in an organization, it's more, it's even more highly recommended because people need to get used to your face. They need to get used to seeing you. Don't be shy. Put on your camera, right? Put on your camera, but you know, make sure um, there's a way to position your camera. There are, there are things you need to learn about that. There's there's if you're using a laptop, you have to raise it to a certain eye level so you can make eye, so you're not looking down on people. People don't know some of these things, but it's it's, it's part of um, visibility. Make sure your room is well lit. Not that your camera is on, but we're still looking for you inside the video because the place is dark. <laughs> so just make sure the environment is quiet and all of those things. There's some work to be put in in this thing. It doesn't just happen by chance. But that's how life is. You've got to be intentional about things and do things properly. All right. So so putting on your video, yes, I, I, I recommend that. Even if it's optional, do, do that. But make sure once your video is on, that your A game is there. You're, you're fully attentive. You're not playing with your phone or you're not doing some other crazy stuff because in the quest for visibility, it can, it can, it can throw you to another direction if you're not careful to so be ready for that. Okay. Okay, all What's right. The next one? I think the next question is from Victor. So Victor, I'm going to mute you now so you can ask your question. Victor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, before I bring in my question, I want to say a very big thank you for doing this presentation. I've gotten a lot of points, and these are great points. Thank you so much. So my question is about um, I visibility project. So when you're asked to volunteer for projects, and you know this is this project is going to be a very tough one. How do you handle it? You're scared of <laughs> not being able to deliver on that project. What do you do? Yeah, very good question, um, Victor. So, uh, look, like I said, um, I would recommend you still take it. Okay. You see, the thing is, sometimes we, we underrate our capacity, what we're able to do. That's the truth. There are things you're used to doing, 
So you believe that, okay, these are things I'm really good at, but we don't stretch ourselves. Go for stretch assignments. Go for those things that will stretch your capacity. You, I'm telling you, you, you'll be surprised and amazed at how good you will do that thing. I, I give you an example with myself on the project that came up. It was a high visibility project such that the person who was recommended to lead that project was two levels higher than I, I was. To tell you how high, highly visible that thing was and how critical it was. In fact, when one of the, um, this was a, a, a global CFO, when he came visiting Africa at the time, he said that he didn't want to hear any other thing we we're doing in finance, whether it's closing, whether it's the, that the most important thing for the business was that project I was going to lead. That's what he said. That's the most important thing for the entire business. So you hear that kind of thing, your heart will skip. Like it means that if I drop the ball here, <laughs> that's the end. Mm -hmm. And it's something I had never done before. So I wasn't sure if I could do it. So it wasn't a case of, oh, I think I, I can do this thing. So sometimes you have to take that risk. And that will drive you to exercise yourself. You have to put it, it will take you putting in more hours than you ordinarily would. But you'll be better for it. it. It's not, you can do it. You can do it. Is Don't let that fear of the unknown overwhelm you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because sometimes, after all, we, we, we take jobs, we go into new companies and new organizations where we don't know anybody, but you go in with the belief that you can deliver, all right? So do that. I, I would encourage you to take it up. So let's, let's, let that fear inspire you to um, learn quickly and, and execute, you know? But I, I definitely will encourage, don't pass it by. Listen, that is a God-given opportunity. When Jesus told Peter, join me, Peter had never walked on water before. Never. That was a high visibility project because everybody was watching. He could have sunk. He could have sunk. So he took a chance. But that was a God-given opportunity. So when, because, and I'm saying this because we're Christians, because you know we pray. There are ways God answers our prayers. The way he answers is not when he comes in the night and is calling you, Victor. Victor, right? Uh -huh. He's going to bring, we're praying for opportunities every day. God, give me new opportunities. Now the opportunity comes, you are shaking. Ah -ah. So what do you now want him to do? The opportunity has come. It's a high visibility project. Grab it, take it, go for it. The God that brought the opportunity will enable you. It will give you the strength and the ability to execute. When it gets tough, go back to him. Go back to him and pray. Ask for strength, ask for insight, ask for ideas. Sometimes I'm asleep or I'm on my bed and ideas are coming to me on what to do at work. It's real. So you also cannot downplay the place of the spiritual in, in what we do. I hope we know that, <clears throat> I hope we know that, you know, the Holy Spirit is the, is the embodiment of all knowledge. You know, when we say something like this, it sounds very Christianese and very, you know, spiritual. Oh, when we say God knows everything, yeah, yeah, I believe that. But do you believe that God knows about accounting? Now we say, hmm, what, what do you mean? Is accounting not knowledge? He knows it. He knows. If you're having trouble at work, you're having trouble with your designs, you're having trouble with uh, engineering stuff, the Holy Spirit can tell you which wire to touch. We don't sometimes, we think these things happen. happen. Are you, so if you say, no, that's not, are you saying the Holy Spirit knows, does, are you not the one that says he knows everything? Now you're doubting that there's some, oh no, this area, no, 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 this is legal. This, these are laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You know, you have to go into the, what are you talking about? Are you saying he doesn't know that? He knows. So depend, that's the advantage that we have. So you can do it. If it gets tough, go back and ask him for, for strength, but don't miss that opportunity because that is an opportunity that is going to, to propel you to the next level. That will be the platform for you to be promoted. If you do that high visibility project and you nail it, I'm telling you, they will easily move. You know, I mean, this guy is great. We need to move this guy. He needs to be doing some other bigger stuff. And you're communicating consistently. And when you're working on high visibility project, let me just say this, okay? Make sure 
you have a line of communication where you're communicating regularly to the big leader and also to the team. So they have an idea of what is going on. Don't be quiet because they may get worried that what's going on, okay? Make sure you're communicating constantly and giving them confidence. And also be honest. If something is not going well, you know, be upfront about it and say, look, we, we having challenges in this area, but not just talk about the problem, also come up with a suggested solution on how you think we can go around this and also ask for their ideas. They will appreciate it that you're being honest. But, you know, it's one thing to be honest and it's another thing to sound overwhelmed. You know, there are people that just sound problems everywhere. Ah, no, 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 this is, this is not what the supply chain has. You're just talking about problems, like the whole world is falling apart. Now, leaders don't like to hear that. They have enough problems already they are dealing with. They need people that can help them solve problems. So you should come there, talk about the problem, present the problem, but come with a solution, a roadmap, and ask for them for help. That's what they want to hear. Tell me the resources you need to fix this thing. Don't come and be telling me about the problems. That's why I hired you in the first place to solve problems. Mm. And in the interviews, you told us that you're a great problem solver. That's one of your top skills. You solve problems like crazy. Now problem has come. You're still coming back to tell me the problem. Then <laughs> why did we bring you in in the first place? So tell them the issue and don't cover the issues because that will make you lose credibility because they will get to know anyways. But it's bad if they don't know it through you because they trusted you as the leader to be upfront about it. So don't, don't, don't come and paint an old rosy picture. That's not the idea. No. If there are areas where things are not going well, be upfront and clear about it, but don't sound defeated or don't sound helpless. Sound like, yes, this is a problem. And this is how I'm thinking we should go about it. Ask for their help. And then they may give you other ideas on how to fix it. That's why they are leaders also. Very good point. So don't ever pass on such opportunities. Grab them. High visibility projects, don't, don't, don't let them go. Grab them. It comes with a risk. But that's visibility. Visibility comes with risks. There's nothing good in life that doesn't have risks. Uh -huh. Even, even leaking ice cream has risk. You know, you can get fat and all of that. So everything, it has its own risk. So you can't, you can't um, because of that, know what to do. So, so, so I'll encourage you to, to grab it. It's an opportunity to learn. You will learn new skills and rely on, on the Holy Spirit for strength and for help there. Okay. Okay, thank you, Uzi. Um, IBK has a question. Please, can you go ahead? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Uzi, good evening. Thank you for this very insightful session. Um, my question, you know, when you talk about, or you mentioned networking as part of um, one of those progressive points and factors we have to work on. When I hear that word, networking, it messes with my head. I'm just being honest. So when I hear networking, I, you know, I tried a couple on Instagram and I realized that people don't want to know you if they don't know you. I'm sure you know what I mean. So <laughs> my question is, how do you actually network without coming across as being an opportunist? That's a brilliant question, um, IBK. And, you know, very, very good question. And, and, I, and I like, you know, how you ended that by saying, you know, without, because people can tell when, Thank you. you know, you're, you're trying to be opportunistic, you're, 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 you're doing this thing because you want to get something out of it. And it yeah. defeats the purpose. Okay. Yeah. Networking is about, let me put it this way. It's, it's almost like you want to make friends. Okay. Mm. You, you want to make friends. So you want to reach out and be friendly. Start with trying to be friends with people. So it mm. shouldn't be a mechanical thing. Like, okay, today is networking day. Who am I going to target? Ah, this person. Boom. Let me send them an email. That's how it works. There has mm. to be, a, it's a relationship. It's a relationship okay. because people are going to, you, you, you can only make withdrawals from relationships you have invested in. That's how it works. You can't just, um, you, know, the, you know, even, 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 look, let me tell you, even this whole things about mentorship, there has to yeah. be some relationship going on there. 
Mm. Sometimes people reach out and say, can you be my mentor? I'm like, from where to where? You know, how? But it has to start from somewhere. That's not how it works. You know, it's, it's different. It, if, I, if I was a teacher and then maybe I'm selling teaching service, that's different. But mentorship comes from a place of relationship. Comes from a place of relationship. So, uh, some, you know, so you, and that's why I gave the example that look at your community groups, for example. It's a perfect platform to begin to learn the art of networking because here you can become friends with people first. Okay, be friendly with people, reach out to them, talk to them on phone, check how they are doing. You know, if there's time, you can go hang out and all of that. Now you're building a network of friends. Okay, so, so expanding your network is, um, it is not just expanding the network of people you can send meals to. No, it's, it's, it's about making yourself friendly. And how do you become friendly with people? It's also about the value you bring. Okay, when people feel like, okay, there's also something beneficial for them in this relationship. They will like you. They will want to be with you. <clears throat> All right. So it, it, it's, it's got to be organic. That relationship has to grow organically. It shouldn't be artificial. So networking is not, let me make a list of people that I'm going to touch base with. No, you, you, it takes time. That's why it's an investment. It takes time. Even at work, even if, if you take your office, for example, networking it's not just people that you know in the office. It's about people you have made friends with, people that you, you gist with, people you talk about something else. Even your manager, you need to network with your manager. Some people don't have personal relationships with their manager. It's just work. Uh, how are you today? Uh, you know, everything is official, formal. No. Everybody is still a human being. So you, 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 you get to understand people, understand your manager, what's his private life like, how is his family, be genuinely, and be genuine about it, not that, okay, I have a list of questions to ask today. No, be genuinely interested in people. Care for people. If you care for people, there's nobody that is immune to care. People like care. People also like to be appreciated, all right? People, people like to, you know, to be celebrated. So if you're the kind of person that you're, you celebrate people, you appreciate people, you honor people, you're going to have a lot of people around you. That's the truth. That, that's the truth. So reach out and build. It's a skill. And it doesn't come to a lot of people naturally. So it, it's something you have to work on over time because you're going to leverage those relationships in future. I can tell you. There are so many examples. I, I can't go into them now this evening, but there are so many examples of things I have benefited from based on personal relationships. You know, so but you, the reason why I said start is not because you're going to get the benefit tomorrow, but you start because somebody, somebody you met in this community group can give you a big post in Abuja in seven years time from today. There's somebody here that's going to become a minister of, of this country in this group. And the person they will remember, you think they remember all work and study people. Ah, work and study, work and study, we're just doing it. The people they remember are their friends. That's the truth. They remember maybe five, six, seven people that were close to them. You know, sometimes people say um, in an organization, oh, there's cabal, there's cabal, there's, there's inner caucus. You are complaining because you're outside that cabal. Did anybody stop you from entering? Why can't you enter the Kaaba? Are they, are they sharing guns in the Kaaba? They're not doing anything bad in the Kaaba. The Kaaba simply means that these are his friends. These are close company. Why can't you be there? Where is happening? You see, the only way you can be there is when you're friendly. So, but if you exclude yourself, then you miss out on a number of things. So take advantage of every opportunity because in, 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 in seven years time, when somebody here, you know, sometimes, look, let me tell you what happens. When opportunities open, and maybe I'm private to some opportunities that open, I'm starting to think in my head, who do I know that can take this role? And the people I remember are people that I've, I've interacted with on a friendly level. Do you understand? That's how it works. And that's how it works with every other leader in every other organization. They're thinking of people. So when they think of people, will they remember you? Why will they remember you? They will only remember you if you were in touch, 
if you kept in touch with them or if, if there's that relationship going on. So make it easy for those things to happen by being friendly with people. So it's, it's not just about sending your CV around. What you should do more is send your personality around. Distribute yourself in the lives of people more than your CV. That's the deposit you're making in the lives of people. You will reap from it. There are many jobs you can get without even sending one CV to anybody. There are many jobs that people reach out to you to ask you, would you be interested? It's after they've talked to you that you start now doing your CV. That's how it works. And it's based on relationship. So determine to make those deposits to distribute yourself, not your CV. Start with distributing yourself first. Um, in people's lives, bring value to people's lives. And, um, and you're gonna reap from that in, in the future. Okay. Thank you very much, Lucy. Thank you. This has been amazing. It's 6 1 p.m. now, so we're uh, just over 11 minutes. Thank you everyone for hanging out with them. Open our heart to Lion Khan now to give a vote of thanks as we of this uh, session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again. Um, okay, thank you very much, um, NJ. Thank you so much, Pastor Osi, for all the insights that you have um, shared with us. Um, it's been an amazing time with you this evening, and we really thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to, to learn from you. I can say that we have not only learned, um, it's been insightful, it has also been exciting. I can't even believe that we spent um, close to um, 105 minutes on this call. Thank you so much for everything. We really appreciate you. So, um, in, Angel, we can all unmute and just say thank you and, and, and end the meeting. Thank you. So let's say thank you to Pastor C. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great session. God bless. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hello. All right, thank you. Thank you, Inka. Thanks a lot, team. Um, this, was, this was really good. I enjoyed the questions. I enjoyed the interaction. Um, so let's go be visible. Start tomorrow. Start tomorrow. Start tomorrow. Don't go and say, ah, deep, deep session, deep session. This is not to be deep session. Go and start tomorrow, OK? And um, look, there's, there's stuff that comes with being visible. But God is your, your strength, you know? And as long as your heart is pure, you're, you're doing this, you know, for the right reasons. You, you really have nothing to fear, you know. So take your place and, and, and you'll be fine. So congratulations in advance and, and thanks yeah, everyone. Have a great week. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you, Pastor O3. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. Thank you. Bye. Have a great week. God bless you. You too. Faustos, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>